Australia Nut, episode 158. I think my first time was growing a $20 account to about $400, right? But it didn't take one day to grow it. It took a week to grow it, right? And after I grew that money, I had a trader's, uh, should we call it a trader's book, a trader's journal, whereby I, I had written everything that I'm blowing on and everything that I'm making money on. Right. So that journey had to be noted down because I needed to know what is it that I'm doing right so that I can repeat. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax, learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up traders, welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host Cam Hawkins and today we've got Stacey Pigmentation on the show. Now Stacey is a South African trader. I know you guys have been dying to get more South African traders on so here you go. Um, she is a single mum who made it in trading so you get to get to hear her, joint, her journey, how she got to that point where she is now living off her trading income and also why they call her the mother of small account flips. So uh, she trades a unique instrument. I know there have been guys out there asking about getting people on the show who trade this unique instrument. To find out what it is, listen up. It might actually be in the title of the show. Um, And also, uh, she moved from trading Forex, trading indices, to trading this instrument. And there's a reason she did. And you're going to find out exactly what that is, along with her rags to riches story. And we've got a video after the show where she drops in her unique approach to trading head and shoulders patterns, along with a bunch of other information there that you're gonna it's gonna help you out on the charts. Now don't forget what I mentioned last episode, which is my guest on episode 152, Christian Frankie, is doing really well on the Global World Cup of Trading Challenge. And he's given you the opportunity to copy the same trades he's placing on that challenge. Uh, so he's currently done 132% in the last six months. Um, so if you want to find out how to do that or you want to do it yourself, you want to get involved, there's no like upfront cost or monthly cost. Um, there's a way to do it. I'm going to sh- let you in on it. You've got to head over to his episode page, which is episode 152. Uh, you can find it there. I'll put links here in the show somewhere. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested and also keep an eye out for the January 2022 special offer on the Robot Builders Club whilst you're over there on Trading Up finding out about Christian then you can find out about the offer that I've got over there as well there's a couple of performance tests to check out they're changing every day so go and check those out to see how this stuff is performing and if you're looking to automate all of what you do or some of what you do then the Robot Builders Club could be right for you I teach you how to do it without any coding Uh, you don't even have to have that much math if anything simple maths is all you need and you've got a chance to automate your ideas on the forex market or any of the other markets you can trade out there as well last but not least least before we get into this episode genius trader coming very soon right let's do it hey folks my sponsors city traders imperium have just launched some amazing changes to their funded trader program you got to check out you can now skip the whole evaluation, trade gold as well as Forex, plus they've increased the drawdown you're allowed in both the evaluation and when funded. With C2A, it's even faster and easier to reach up to $4 million in funding with a 50 to 70% profit share. Click the link in the description to find out what else has changed. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Stacy Pigmentation here all the way from Pretoria over there in South Africa. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Well, look, a few people have actually sort of asked for you to come on, and that's one of the reasons I, th- I thought I'd get you on. I've had a look at some of your stuff. I, I see you trade the uh, uh, volatility index, and I don't think I've had anyone who trades it as much as you based on your Instagram stories. <laughs> so I'm keen to get into that. But before we do jump in, can you tell us how you got into trading, and we'll find out your story to, to where, you get, uh, where you are now? Um, I think it's a love of money. But not in a bad way, because now if there's people who love money, they'll literally go and get it from somebody who's making a lot of money. So with me, it it came into terms of having to find a job, leave my job, 
and then go work at a club and that's where I actually found out about trading. I met one of the big guys back then. His name was Cashflow Novo. I don't know if you know about him. Cashflow Novo. Um, Novo, yes. Okay. He he's one of the big guys here. Um he actually told me what he's into and ever since I heard about trading, I never looked back because now hey, that's where the money was. Cool. Okay, so so you met this guy at a, a club that you're working at, and I yeah. mean, it's interesting the fact that you've had a focus on money was the driver, and you know, usually that trips people up. So, so when you say you never look back, what what was the sort of detailed story when you sort of get into the meat of that? Oh, it was a painful one because now you can imagine you come from a home whereby I had a baby at 23, and I didn't have a stable job, right? So. My mom was the only person who was working and we survived by her and whatever that she was making wasn't enough for all of us. So with me, it was that moment whereby I needed to break the cycle of having to work a nine to five, you know, and then have to find something that's going to give you more time with everybody at home. And then trading was my way out. So I needed to do something that's different that everybody's doing. It's either I was going to become a businesswoman or a literal investor. So I call myself an investor rather than a forex trader because now even if you look at my trades, it's more of me holding long term rather than a day, you know, or just two hours or three hours. And so how did you how did your journey from like being a single mum to, to being a trader? I mean, what did you do? What was the actual journal journey? What did that look like? Oh, that was that was something else. You see, um, when I stepped into the trading industry, I was the only one in the house who actually wanted to know what trading is, right? Because most of the time when people talk about trading, it's it's something, it's it's not good because now people get to lose their money. So I think I spoke to my mom about it, then she didn't understand what I was talking about, right? And when I looked at my daughter, I was like, you know what, everything that I'm going to do, it has to cover whatever that she's going to go through. So luckily, my mom had to take care of my daughter while I go out out there. Okay, I used to actually get information at church. See, our, our pastor used to buy us data so that we can go on the internet, research about trading, read stuff. And then there was this other leader of ours. His name is Pavallo. He used to actually get information from the internet, would actually access the information through him, would read and try to practice whatever that comes out of that situation. So it was a really tough time because now I have a daughter at home who's going to school. And then I, I literally need to like, make sure that she's covered when I'm not there. And when I come back home, you can imagine, I'll come back home very late. My mom comes back before me. And then sometimes I'd like, I'd like leave, leave the, the, the whole situation to my little brother so that my little brother can take care of my daughter. So it wasn't really a good, smooth run through. It was... Sounds, yeah, it was complicated. It sounds like it was the, like everybody the, was just involved in the family. Yeah, it sounds like the hardest uh, job in the world to try yeah. and become a trader when you've a haven't got the internet, b have got yeah. a kid to look after, and c you're working a nine to five job. I mean, most people have only yeah. got like they've either got some of them only got one. They're working a job. Others have got yeah. maybe two. They've got a kid and a job. Um, but yeah. the fact that he had no internet as well, and I think uh, another South African trader, Lasiba, had the same issue where he had no internet and was having to go to the library yeah. or some public place to get it. Now, um, if, what what kind of how on earth did you get information from the internet to I'm guessing educate yourself on on the markets in a in a way that was usable. Um, with me, YouTube was a no-go area for me. Why? Because now I felt like they were selling dreams, right? So I needed books. I needed to read something, see it happen inside of a book, go back to the market and see it on the market. Now, the trick was, a textbook would tell you that the market is looking like this. And then when you focus more on the textbook, you forget about the realities that you're going to find on the market. So most of the time, whatever I found in a textbook, I try to make sense out of it on the market. Meaning all the changes that, that, that come through with reality trading. Because now people are still in a bubble of having to see textbook things rather than reality things. 
And how did so, you how did you yeah. how on earth did you get even to a chart without um, having the internet? I mean, did you have a computer? If you don't have the internet, you don't have a you don't have the chart in, in this day and age. I I used my phone most of the time. Ah, okay, right, right. Of course. Like yeah. everybody, everybody would be like, "No, you need to have a laptop to trade. You need to have, you know, a a, a pa- iPad and all that." But with my kind of push and the inspiration that was sitting around, if you are a forex trader, you could make it out actually. You could become that one percent that makes it out. So literally, I didn't need a laptop. All I needed was my phone. Because even now, when I talk to my students, sometimes I tell them, you know what? I did all of this through my phone before I could even afford to buy my own laptop. Right. And so talk us through that that journey of like, you know, even funding an account, placing the first trade, and what on earth kind of strategy were you even using (laughs) back then? The strategy, I'm not sure what I was using. Back then, I didn't understand what was really going on. Everything was just a movement. But what I know is that mostly we based our our findings on accumulation and distribution, which was the white which is the white off. Now it's popularly known as the white off, right? Whereby we understand that though there's going to be a consolidation in the market, there's going to be a breakout, a retest, and then you need to find yourself inside of those entries. But the rules of how to enter the market when a retest has happened was was what was separating us from everybody else. And for some time, we used that, and we also used moving averages. I think it was a 14, and a, it's 20-something. No, it's a 14 moving simple average and an EMA of 200, right? So we would actually let them cross, or before they cross, you find yourself inside of that entry because of what accumulation and distribution is saying. Then when the, 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 the moving averages finally cross, you know it's a big signal for you to just hold. So funding an account was the most difficult thing ever. I remember that um, there was a point whereby one of our um, a, a team, I, I come from a team of about, it was, it was 10 people if I'm not lying, but we were only left, it was only the two of us who were left and held on to trading. I remember one guy called Baba Lo, he even went to find a job so that we could have money to fund our accounts. At some point, my father would give me money to buy Christmas clothes, but I'll look at things like, oh, I'm not going to buy myself Christmas clothes. I'm going to buy my daughter, but the money that's meant for me, I'm going to invest it in trading. Then I'll blow it in a minute, and I'll go like, ah, why didn't I buy clothes? At some point, my mom gave me 4,000 rent. I think 4,000 rent is equivalent to 250 USD to go have a license, a driver's license. Do you know what I did with the money? I'm um, guessing you put it into, <laughs> into an account. <laughs> yeah, and I blew it. For some odd reason, I blew it. And, yeah, you do odd jobs, like go plate somebody's hair just to so have money, um, you know, um, go on day jobs just to so have money to fund an account. The reason why today I'm known as mother of small accounts is because I didn't start big. It all started small. And I... Everything that was small, it had to be big to me because I had to make it out of that small to something big. Right. So, so how? So, so that's where your sort of your whole sort of premise of, and I did remember seeing you saying you're like you're the mother of small accounts somewhere. Um, so that whole yeah. premise of of trying to grow small accounts to big accounts, obviously, I mean, you know, people call it account flipping. I mean, is that something you specialize in now? Would you say? Um, for me, it's not my own specialty it is just that it is what i want to change people in people think that when you have to trade you need to be somebody who has a whole lot of money but i am changing the narrator so everybody thinks that if you've got ten thousand rand your one thousand usd or your 500 usd that's when you get to make it out of trading but what they don't know is that that 500 usd you could just blow it in a second right so for me Changing the, the narrative was that I need to invest more so that I can make it big. Okay. Right? Cool. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. I'm saying with me trading, it's all it's different altogether. I talk about investing so that I can get something out of it. So if I'm, I'm talking about investing to get something out of it, that means I need to learn when is the right time to trade. I don't just trade everything in the market. I just put in whatever that's going to make the most out of it. So so when so thinking back to when you had that first uh I suppose account growth where you didn't blow the account, I mean 
were you still using this accumulation distribution moving average Wyckoff thing and <laughs> and what was that whole sort of experience like and have you got the figures that you can tell us can you remember what the figures were um i think my first time was growing a 20 dollar account to about 400 dollars right but it didn't take one day to grow it it took a week to grow it right and after i grew that money i had a trader's uh, should we call it a trader's book a trader's journal whereby i i had written everything that i'm blowing on and everything that i'm making money on right so that journey had to be noted down because i needed to know what is it that i'm doing right so that i can repeat the whatever thing that i'm doing right so i had to leave the textbook trading and focus on whatever that's making money currently so what i understood is that what's mostly working for me is a head and shoulder a head and shoulder is some sort of accumulation and distribution also right because now it's supply and demand also it's more of these things they work together so a head and shoulder was one of the things that actually woke me up whereby i do not trade the shoulders i trade the armpits because now the body is longer now that's where you find most of the time there's a whole lot of momentum that's happening there where are the armpits? So that's what I, I, I don't even think. Myself. I don't even think I know where the armpits are. Are they the? Uh, <laughs> is that the, the? Is that the other thing they call the neckline? Is it the neckline or is it further down? Yes, it's the neckline. neckline. Okay, yes, yeah, it's gotcha. the neckline. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it it differs with with institutions whereby sometimes I call it the neckline, sometimes I call it uh, the armpit because now the shoulders are done. Yeah. Then what's left is just the movement. That flows. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. So you noticed that that the head and shoulders pattern was was working for you. Was there anything else you can remember that was something that you you liked the look of that seemed to work? Um, what was it? Nah, it was just the head and shoulder. With me, if it's not a head and shoulder, then I couldn't trade it. Why? It didn't make sense. It doesn't make money for me. I blow a lot. Like all these W's, double bottom, du- uh, double tops. Most of the times, I'll make mistakes. Why? Because now you find that those double bottoms and double tops, they have a structure inside of a structure, meaning you are seeing a double top, but it is going to reject whereby there's a real double bottom and the market just gets to shoot all the way up. So I understood those movements once I I broke out of this thing of blowing a lot and becoming consistent. It was one thing I discovered as I was trading. And so if you had to sort of put a number on how many accounts you think you blew to start off with, what would it be? <laughs> it'll be more than 50. I'm telling you, it'll be more than 50 accounts. Because <laughs> now you can imagine all those $10 that were tryouts and $20. I think I might have lost 2000 USD plus right, on okay. just $10, $20. Ten accounts, because yeah. when you, yeah, it, it was a lot. And so what, what markets were you trading when you were trading that small? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was trading currencies. So I was born and bred from currencies and NASDAQ. NASDAQ, well, what I liked about it is that it reached the goal faster, meaning when there's a setup, it reacts faster. And then on currencies, it, you blow slowly. It's more like killing you softly <laughs> and slowly so. So if you're blowing an account, it will take time, and then you will see yourself blowing an account. So those ones made me understand the patient side, side of trading. And Nasdaq made me understand the aggressive side of trading. Right, interesting stuff. And yeah. the uh, okay, so so um, so that was your first account, twenty bucks to four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. What about? And so, what did you do with that four hundred? Did you withdraw it? Oh my gosh. I'm so... The truth is coming out today. To say. <laughs> I I gave it to one of my 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 other t- okay, teammates. He was well knowledge. He, he had a whole lot of knowledge according to trading and all that. So I showed him that hey, I grew a twenty dollar account with power and then this is where we took it to. And then he was like, yeah, there's NFP that's coming. And sh- yeah, the rest is history. Oh. So the guy the guy tried to trade NFP and he blew my account. Oh right! So you gave Ooh. him your account. You said you can trade this, and he just blew NFT. the whole. Yeah, the okay. whole money. Yeah, <laughs> even today when I when I think about it, I laugh. I'm like, yeah. And you know, um, with with trading, we get to evolve. Back then, I was using trend lines. 
I wasn't really good with trend lines. I didn't really follow them. But as I was trading, I, I had seen myself not trading trend lines because now most of the things that happened with trend lines would actually be, lead me to glowing. Right, okay. So you got rid of them. Yeah, I got rid of yeah. trend lines because now every time I try to put a trend line on my trace, I blow. And even the guy who blew my account, he blew using trend lines. It's like, no, this is the fat touch. The market is going to, to, to go down. The market broke. Oh, the headache. The kind so, of so stress you were, So you were hoping that that 400 was going to turn into 800 and uh, yeah, you'd be able to split you know, the account. Or more. Or more, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, 20 to 400 is pretty good in a week. Was that all on Forex or and NASDAQ or something else? No, it was, it was all on Forex. I was trading, I remember I was trading GBP, USD, Euro, USD, and Euro, ZAR, and USD, ZAR. So it was just me every day having to find a trade that's just going to make me a certain amount of money that I'm done for the day. So I didn't really try to make 100 USD a day. I tried to make 15, and if I make more, then good. And then if I had made more than 200 in a week, I would leave trading altogether because now, hey, it's very hard to grow a small account to 200 USD. But on that week, we grew the $20 to 400, almost 500 USD. It was almost 500. I say 400 because now some of the money was blowing while trying to get other setups and all that. Then 400 to the exit was left in the account. And what about the the first time you did withdraw from an account? When can you tell us that account flipping story? If it was a small account, I'm guessing it had to be a small account, right? Because at this yeah, at this current stage in the journey, you've, you, <laughs> at this stage in the journey, you haven't got <laughs> any money left in any of these accounts. So um, yeah, okay, it was five hundred rand account, which was what is that hundred bucks? Did you say hundred dollars US? About that? No, uh, five hundred rand is about. Uh, I think it's your twenty dollars now. Okay, right. Okay. It's not twenty five. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Some way there. Okay. And so you managed to flip depending that again. Depending on where the rent is. Okay. So depending on where the rent is. Yeah. And so, so you managed to flip that account as well. Another twenty twenty dollar account. Yeah, another twenty dollar account. I flipped it to a whole lot of money. That was Nasdaq. Right. Now this time was Nasdaq. Okay. I I withdrew the money and I remember I I went out I bought airtime for some odd reason we bought phones it it was just yeah it's just a nice movement having to spend the money that you have withdrawn from the market right and so from then I guess you had a lot more cash to put into small accounts yeah. So this time now it was me trading Nasdaq and leaving currencies all together. Right. Um, and then that was after three years of trying. My fourth year was the most, um, should I say, profitable. My fourth year was profitable because I went to from a zero to a hundred in no time. Sorry, what does that mean in terms of zero to a hundred? Um it means I went to making little profit to making a whole lot, right? right? Okay. That is when, um, I don't know if you know the JP Markets, JP Market Broker. Uh, oh, JP, JP Market. No, no I, I don't. don't. Okay, there's a broker in South Africa. It's called JP Markets. It, it had really nice spreads for us to trade NASDAQ, right? So that broker actually turned us into what we are today. Because now, every time we trade, we get it right. It was now before the coronavirus came in. Every time we traded. And then while we were on the movement, I think it was towards uh, January, then February, then your March. That's when we went. I think on my fourth year, that's when we went from that 0 to 100 to from 100 to 1,000. So the movement was just consistent as much. And then JP Market had to close down then. So when it closed down, we found it hard to find a broker that we could relate to. So after that, it was us now having to lose money on a daily basis because we're trying out this this broker, that broker, trying out this and that. Then that's when I found myself inside uh, your volatility pairs. Now, I, I switched from trading NASDAQ to volatility pairs. What, why did I have the switch? Because now the volatility pairs, when a structure is formed, it reacts now. It doesn't wait 
So it was more of me trading volatility pairs in a mentality of me trading NASDAQ. Right. Okay. And and did you do any back testing or anything on the volatil- volatility pairs to try and see if they would like work the same as NAS- no. NASDAQ or no? You just dove no. in and, and, and see it, and to see if it would work and it was it was better. Um, for for the first, I think for the first month, that was just me trying to figure out what's going on. Then I turned fifty USD to about seven thousand USD in three days. Right, in three days. In three days. And how now how that earth, is when? How on earth do you do that? Can you sort of break that whole whole sort of trading journey down into like how many trades? what the risk to reward is on those trades. How does it look so that people can understand how that's even possible? Okay, it's possible because now I was trading V75, or like TT75. I think people are familiar with it. See, it was stuck in a confluence on a bear time frame, meaning on a weekly time frame, you'd find one candlestick or buy candlestick going up. But on a daily time frame, you'd find that it's seven, it's seven candlesticks. Because now they, they take for the whole week. It's seven candlesticks that are going up. Yeah. Then the next the next week, the market is coming back down. And that means you needed to sell the market. So it was stuck in a consolidation. But on a daily time frame, it was movements that are really giving us money. It was before it changed the name from binary.com to Derive. Uh, right, it was on that Derive platform, which I've recently heard about in terms of... Yeah. I mean, are they are they... Can you tell us about that platform? So is the volatility, volatility index there, is that the actual VIX that you're trading? Or is it a... Yeah. It is the actual... Okay, right. So, um, But they have got some random markets there that don't really exist. Is that right? Cause <laughs> somebody sent me like the boom and crash markets the other day, and I was like, what on earth is this? And it was like these markets <laughs> that just went... Just like a linear sort of line up and down. They call them the synth- synthetic indices. Ah, okay. Yeah. So. So you don't they, tra- you don't they, trade those. You trade the, the 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 stuff that's pegged to the the VIX. No, but everything that's inside of that platform, they call it the synthetics. Your boom and crash, your jump, your volatility pairs. They're just in one umbrella. Ah, right. So, so they. So, are there any? So, is this? A, is there an actual market that sits be, behind them, or is it more of a, well, I suppose, a, a casino kind of thing? I don't. I don't. I'm trying to get my head around <laughs> it. I've never really worked that out. You, you know, with me, when I bumped into them, I didn't really understand what was going on. The only thing I knew is that um, they were also influenced by S and P five hundred. Right, right. Yeah. And then when I dig deeper into the information, I found out that there's a rich family that started their own platform of trading, and then they introduced the volatility pairs. Okay. So from then I was like, no, as long as there's people who have actually started this, then maybe I should find myself inside that market and make whatever that I want. If the market gets to crash or something happens, then I'll go back to my Forex because I still trade even Nasdaq, even now, you could if you go through my Instagram account, you can see that I also tried. I, I also trade Nasdaq from time to time. If not, it's gold. If not, it's GBP. Okay, cool. So that makes sense. So, so you're basically doing most of your stuff on the on this vol, uh, this VIX volatility index mm. kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, and you're spreading it around now. Now, what about your risk to reward? Or oh, actually, let's dive back before we jump to that. Dive back into the whole sort of what was it? Twenty dollars to four k. In three days, how do you do that? It so was fifty. It was fifty dollars, right? To seven k. Seven k. Come on, my memory Sorry shot. Okay, yes, yeah, fifty dollars <laughs> to seven k in three days. Yeah. How on earth does that? Yeah. How do you do that? How many trades are you placing during those three um, days? On that market, right? Like I said, it was a market that was forever going up for the whole week. So with me, I had looked at the patterns that were happening there. And then I noticed a slight difference between what, why is it ranging on a weekly time frame? When I go back to the daily time frame, I saw myself entering a buy. And then for the rest of the day, the market was buying. I had about 10 trades put on it with 0.01. And then for that day, I made 1.5 USD. 
And I was like, I'm not going to exit. Let me just hold a little bit longer. The next day in the morning at 2 a.m., the, the new candlestick started. I entered another 10. Right? Yeah, so you. So okay. the market started moving. Started going my direction. And then I held for the whole week. And then when the market finally reached that price, because it was consolidating between two prices, right? When the, the market reached that price, I exited. And then it started breaking out, but it, it fell back in to sell the market. Then I wasn't ready for the sell of the market because psychologically, I wasn't built to trade it. Remember, I didn't have information on it. It was me trying to find out what's really going on. Then for that sell, well, I didn't trade. I waited for another buy. Another buy came out. I traded. So that means on my first, uh, those those first trades whereby I held for the whole week, that's when I made 7K and then I withdrew all the money because now I know the fact that you've got money in your account, you force yourself to trade things that don't exist. So I withdrew all the money. Right. I sat back, I relaxed and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm 7,000 <laughs> USD richer, <laughs> you know? Okay, cool. And, okay, yeah, sorry, go on. And um, what I was trading there, there was no structure. I'd like to believe that I was just trading a movement that was stuck inside of a consolidation. It was range trading. People know how to range trade. They'll even do it on five minutes. So I was doing it on a daily time frame. So so the general premise around it was that you were able to, I'm, I'm trying to get a picture on where your stop loss was. I'm guessing the stop losses you placed at the beginning of the day just didn't get hit. Or... No, the the minute I opened my positions, I didn't even experience a drawdown. Right. Okay. So they went straight yeah. into profit, <laughs> and it was just like away it goes, bang. Yeah. No wonder yeah. you stuck with them. Um, and have yeah. you found it? Have you found it as easy to do in the future? Uh, I find them very easy to trade, right? And the thing I like about them is that you don't need to have much to trade with them, but you make a whole lot. Right. And is right. the is the trick sort of having an open running profit and then taking it at logical points? No. For me, remember I, I said that I, I like to say that I, I invest. And then when I'm done investing in that thing, that's when I take my, or my everything out. Right. So at that moment, with me, it wasn't uh, having to take some of the trades out. I was just scaling in just to get the most that I can make out of the market because now on a weekly time frame, it is just one candlestick that's so big. But on a daily time frame, it's about five to six candlesticks going to the right direction. Then the seventh one is just creating price action. Then you know it's time for you to exit because the market might, it might actually reverse. Yeah. So on a daily, it looked like your V tops and your V bottoms. And so to all these, uh, these you know, V-tops, V-bottoms, head and shoulders, you obviously sort of, um, in candlesticks in particular, how did you get yourself to grips with all of that, the, the, the sort of, you know, being able to read a candlestick? You sort of talked about the fact that, um, you know, it, looking at the charts and instead of looking at the books is a better way to educate yourself. I mean, how did that sort of occur with you and how... Was it frustrating at points and was there a simple way that you sort of managed to understand everything or identify patterns? Um, okay. Um, with that being said, um, remember I had suffered the market for three years trying to do it the right way, the textbook way, right? So now because I had the textbook knowledge, I needed to make sense out of what is the difference between having to have all this information from the textbook and having to apply it on the market, right? Right. What I found is that I mostly wanted something that's perfect, something that looked like a textbook. But the market will give you something that's improper, imperfect, but it literally goes to the right direction. So I needed to grow a switch in my mind whereby I could just see a head and shoulder before it even forms, right? Now, not every head and shoulder is going to have proper shoulders. Some of the shoulders are going to drag longer. Some of them are just going to go to the shoulders and prepare for a breakout and everything is just happening there. So with me, it was that I found my cure and my consistency in uh, volatility pairs. Why? Because now everything that happened there was very fast. Very fast had me uh, looking at the market differently, meaning 
never mind the textbook. Let me just make my own textbook. Everything that I enter that makes sense, it gets into the textbook. If it doesn't make sense, it goes to the bad trading journal. Then there's my bad days and then there's my good days. Okay. Cool. All right. It's it sounds fascinating. Uh, it's really sort of different from what a lot of other people have been on the show in terms of trading the, the volatility <laughs> index. I'm sure others have traded head and shoulders. Um, yeah. Now, uh, and what I really like is the fact that you're able to break it down yourself and even understand that you know something from a text a textbook example isn't what it's going to look like on the chart. You need to sort of go, well, yeah. what's everyone else going to see this as? Are they going to see it as a head and shoulders or are they going to see it as something else? So yeah. that's, to come up, how did you come up with that yourself? Or did you? Did somebody say to you, it's not going to look the same on the chart, don't worry about trying to find the exact head and shoulders? Um, it was a realization after blowing for some time that, you know what, maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. Now, it came a point whereby I needed to find my purpose inside of the market, right? Then for me to get right, I said, let me start teaching people. Maybe I have too much information that I'm holding on to that I need to give people. Then after giving it out, maybe I'll I'll feel that the weight is off my shoulders. You see, I had so much knowledge that every time when I open the chat, I'll get a, a, a block. You know, a trader's block whereby everything is a sell, everything is a buy. Now you end up trading one candlestick. And then when it comes back, it goes to the right direction, you blow an account. But in your mind, you have so much information. So now, for me to just switch, I had to teach some people, right? While I was teaching people, now I came to a realization that, no, this is how the head and shoulder is done. I see it perfect here, but the imperfections are here. And where there's imperfections, that's when you get to advance. So my advancement came with teaching. When, when I was teaching people, I was well aware of what's happening in the market. Why? Because I didn't need to lead people astray. I needed to tell people that this is it. And if you see it like this, then it played out the textbook way. Good for you. Then there's this way it, it, it can play out. About three to four scenarios that are playing out over head and shoulder. Then I'll just draw them down for them. And then I'll, I'll tell them to go on the market and look for those head and shoulders. They'll come back and they'll go like, yeah, this is what I've, I've seen. This is what I've seen. And I'll go like, now you need to find yourself in the market. Yes, that's how I found myself in the market. Find yourself. Because now with trading, everybody trades something different. We all see the market differently. We can all be taught by you, Cam, but how we're going to decode the message that you have given us is going to be different from everybody else. Mm. Yeah. Now, yeah, um, so- what about what about diving into some of the stats around your trading now? So, like, how many trades do you take a week on average? Uh, it depends. It, it depends on weeks and the kind of strategy I'm using. If I'm not seeing a head and shoulder, I could just stay for a week without trading. Like, like I said, I am not a a, a scalper. I'm an intraday trader, and also I have. Uh, should I so it's, call it position positioning trading? Or should I call it swinging? Swing trading, because yeah. sometimes you could hold that you could hold longer than a month. Sometimes you could hold longer than a week. Sometimes it's longer than days. So, so what, it depends on the kind of patterns that the market is giving me. So what time frames are you looking at when you're trying to get these longer term positions? Uh, your daily, your weekly, your monthly. So I play in between those three: monthly, weekly, and daily. For our well, I go there from time to time. Sometimes when I want to score myself an entry, if I have missed the first entry I was supposed to make. And how do you get into the trades? Are you market limit stop orders? Which one? Um, no, I I literally go in live like just market order. Okay, yeah, yeah, market order. And uh, what's the what's your typical winning rate? Winning percentage. Um, let's say seventy thirty. And risk to 70, reward. 30. Risk to reward. If you had to average it out, it depends on the kind of account that I'm holding, right? If I'm holding a big account, then I know I need to risk the ten percent of the account so that I can grow it nicely. But on a aggressive account, my aggressive accounts are these small accounts, whereby it's either I go all in or nothing. Oh, literally, it's, so my, it's margin call or nothing. 
Yeah. So <laughs> okay. my mentality is my mentality is on a small account, I need to make most out of it. Right? So what I'm going to do is I risk it all. It's either I blow or I make money. That's my mentality when it comes to a small account. If I have blown, well, there's a big account that's going to fund my small account. Okay, cool. And um, what would your small account be these days when you started off? What size? I I, I started off with a $10 account. I moved it in one day. It went from $10 to $1,600. <laughs> Crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll start your uh, your small accounts with like ten bucks even now. Yes, I, uh, I do have those accounts today. I traded a seven dollar one, then so, it went to a hundred dollar. I closed. So how do you how do you get it from ten to ten dollar account to one thousand dollars in a day? Is that just purely because the market just flew and you picked the bottom? Yeah, you 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 find it on a head and shoulder on on the armpits I'm talking yeah. about. Then it just flows. Yeah. It flows to take profit very fast. And I suppose if you think about it logically, it's like if you get head and shoulder patterns that are significant on the daily, weekly, monthly or whatever, or even any time frame, but then surely that's the major reversal pattern. They don't happen that often. You've got a higher chance yeah. of the market going your way. I'm guess, I'm, that's my way sort of just simply looking at it. <laughs> um, okay, so so now if uh, you sort of talked about the instruments you trade now, um, what, so what does your typical, let's say, week look, look like? So what what would you do from a trading week point of view? Um, my, my, my day starts on, my week starts on Sunday, right? On Sunday at 2 a.m., mm-hmm. that's where my week starts. So on Sunday, I need to be up to see what's, what's literally happening in the market. That means between Sunday and Monday, I'll know how my week will go like. Why? Because now on Sundays, it's a new candlestick that's starting on weekly. So is that candlestick a continuation or is it going to be a rejection? Those are the things I note down on Sunday. Then with entries, right, with entries inside of the market, given that they have to happen, it's either at that 2 a.m. or they're going to happen at 10 a.m. Right? Why am I talking like this? I put myself on four-hour intervals. That means each and every four-hour candlestick, I need to see how it starts like, especially when price action has given me the light. So now I need to come back and recheck if my entries are just going to come out of that time frame. Because now with uh, volatility pairs, we don't really have sessions like New York. You, 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 you need to make use of your time. That means you know that this pair is going to move at this time. Then by that time, you need to be up and see what kind of structure or what kind of price action candlesticks did the market give you so that you can just jump in. That makes sense. Yeah, so, okay, it's, it's interesting they don't have um, sessions with these synthetic pairs. I suppose that makes sense as well. Um, now, what about if you're a day trader, sorry, if you're working a day job, uh yeah. What steps would you recommend for somebody to try and you know start making money trading, growing an account? Um, I, I I mostly tell the people that you know what you need to look at long term. Something you could hold for three days, if not two days, right? Um, mostly you trade your supply and demand, right? When the market is on the demand mm-hmm. level and there's a rejection and there's price action, after it gets to be retested or mitigated, rather, you know that it's going to create an entry. Make sure you're inside of that entry. And because now I wake up every day at 4 a.m., in South Africa it's 4 a.m., we get to go through the market and what I think about the market. There was a head and shoulder pattern that was formed on Volatility 50, right? And I had told everybody that this is what's going to happen, right? It was, it was, in, it was forming at that time. It was on the head. Right? I told people that it is going to break up, get, get to this point, reject, come back here, reject, go all the way up. And then if you don't catch it along these ways, right, this is where you're supposed to catch it. So with people who are working most of the time, I give them setups that are longer so that they can sustain themselves. They don't have to check the market every now and then. They know that the day that they check their markets is when they have entered. But if tomorrow they find the market going their way, then they need to relax and focus on their job. 
And then from time to time, we find, we, we update them what's happening with that market, especially if most of the people inside of the group, they have entered that market, they update from time to time. So you know where you're spending while you are at work. When the picture comes, hey, this is where we are. We're thinking that it's going to reject because now there's people who are playing a role inside of everybody's trading life. Yeah, sort of talking about that, and uh, I suppose you know you've obviously training a few people up as well and giving them help to to try and make some money here. Now you've probably seen a whole bunch of guys come through with certain mindset issues, and you're like, you just why are you doing that? Or I don't know, you could probably see mm-hmm. what they're doing wrong. Um, yeah. Do you have any special hints or tricks or techniques that you teach people or can share with us today that you might that might help somebody? improve their mindset when it comes to trading um i literally tell them that they need to forget what they've learned right it is very hard to erase something from somebody who has learned for seven years but when you get into my institution you need to forget everything that you have learned right you you leave it at the door then when you are done with whatever that I'm telling you that's going to happen uh, to the market, go pick it up and take the trash out, leave whatever that works with whatever that we have taught you. So we offer more of psychological teachings rather than staying on the market straight. Because now most of the people are, are, are actually facing psychological problems. They see a setup, they don't enter at the right time, or they don't enter when they think it's the right time. Now, when the market has passed that that point whereby they're supposed to enter, that's when they do their, their, their entries. Now, we need to separate themselves from having to wait for the market to move so much first before they can see an entry. Right? And then after that, beyond that, it is that I teach them that they should start from a small account. I tell them literally fund a $10. I don't want somebody using a demo. I want them to fund $10, right? Have that one entry be made. Look at how much of the drawdown do they face in the market. If it's more than $3, then they need to get their entries right. Yeah, interesting. That's actually quite a challenge, isn't it? If you want to, you know, if you're saying you've got a, sorry, on a $10 account, how much would they be risking, let's say, if it was on a Forex market in terms of um, lot size? Uh, they use the standard loss size. Like they one lot on to. a $10 account? Yeah, no standard. Like some something, some, it, it depends on a pay. Literally, yeah. on especially on V75, all the pairs are special in their own ways, right? If there's a pair that has an entry and you have a $10 account, you only open one, one trade with a standard lot size, right? And if your standard lot size goes to too much of a drawdown. That means your entries, you need to work on them. Mm. The minute you experience a drawdown, then you need to see where you have went wrong. That's why we have a trading journal. Every every experience that you have in the market, you note it down. Why the next time you have that experience in the market, you'd know when to wait and when to jump in. Well, I actually like that from so, a... from a um, What I'm thinking is it's from a uh, like a sort of punishment point of view... If you yeah. don't get your entry spot on, you're basically going to pay ten bucks to the market. Yeah, because you're going to yeah. blow that account, right? So yes, so that's your price to pay. And the I suppose you're probably going to spend more time filling in your journal if you don't fill yeah. in your journal. If you've got ten bucks on the line here every time you take a trade, and you'll probably be a bit more cautious, going, "Well, I've got one chance. I've got one chance to make this trade right. So I've got to hit it yeah. on the money." Um, yes, and you'll probably won't rush into there's quite a few things that's a really good tip a really good tip um now uh let's jump into a quick fire round here and uh we will jump into a price chart soon and and see what you do on a price chart so i'm really interested to see this uh these volatility pairs um play out now how long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable it took me three years my fourth year was the most profitable and sorry, just uh, I should ask, how many years in total have you been trading now? Five years. Five years. Uh, what's your next fa- year? It's my six years uh, anniversary in trading. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. What's your yeah. favorite entry setup? 
still head a head and shoulders. And shoulders. <laughs> yeah, head and shoulders. Okay, oh, I should have. I shouldn't have answered yeah. that. It's late here, guys. Um, we got a time a time zone difference. Quite a big one. Now, what strategies do you use to exit or manage trades? Um, most of the time, um, and there's something I teach like market structure, right? Market structure. I, I think when I start, I, I think that one. Let us leave it to when I get to analyze. Okay. Then you will see where my entries would be and where my exits would be. Yeah. Because now that one needs for me to show you. If there's a demand zone, then I'm going to hold for longer. I wait for the market to form impulse, then correct, then another impulse. When that impulse is done, then I'll see some rejections that are happening in the market. Then okay. that's when I know that I need to exit. But if there's no rejections that are harsh, I wait a little bit longer because the market might fly sky high if it's a buy. If it's a, it's a sell, it'll just drop. It'll just yeah. melt. Yeah. What about a recommended trading book or resource? Oh, um, there's this book that makes sense. It, it makes more sense now as we talk um, and as I figured who I am in the market. Um, it's Trading Like a Pro by Suri Dudela. Well, Trade you, Like a Pro. How do you spell it, the name? Suri. Suri, it's S U R I. Then Dudella, it's D U D E double L A. Okay, and that was like trading like a pro, was it? Trading like it's a trade like a pro, yes. Oh, okay. and that book has every setup that I could ever imagine. But when I had it back then, uh, five years ago, <laughs> It didn't make sense because yeah, now okay, I didn't yeah. understand the market yeah. like now. Now when I go through it, I'm like, oh, I know what you mean here. Yeah. She might use different words that I might use with my students, but it all ends up being the very same thing. Yeah, interesting. So um, I had, I've I never had heard that book that before. Had, never heard it. Yeah. Cool. Good recommendation. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a few people Thank out there jumping on and we'll put the link in the show notes, guys, so you can download that or buy it um now what about uh your preferred broker and trading platform i'm guessing it's derive um yeah derive derive but um for currencies and nasdaq right well i've been through a lot with all these brokers in south africa that i decided to use xness so far xness is a good broker and Mm -hmm. i've learned a whole lot about them right and i'm also trying to make people learn about brokers and what they are what they really are right so that a broker doesn't get to close down with your money and then you have nothing to actually work out on. So Xness has been good so far. I'd really recommend it, especially if you're a beginner and trying to find yourself in the market, Xness would be good for you. Um, and I always say that if they don't pay you and you have withdrawn, I'll pay you the money that you have withdrawn because that's how much I put the trust in them. They pose as in like a market maker in the market and then they get to stress when somebody is blowing an account. So they would literally call you and put you in for some little bit of training so that you can be consistent in the market. So what they strive is that they want you to be very consistent, right? Because now when you are consistent, then that means you're trading every day. You're getting better and better. Mm. That's what they strive for. So that's what I liked about Xness. But, yeah, those are the two brokers I'd recommend. I was just thinking if your guys were uh, trading uh, $10 accounts and blowing them regularly, they'll be getting, getting a lot of phone calls <laughs> from the ex- Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, a whole lot. Yeah. What, about, <laughs> what about the trading platform that you use, the software? Uh, um, I just use the MT4 and the MT5. MT5. Um, for, yes, MT5. MT5 for which? Oh, which, for uh, analyzing. Yeah, uh, I, okay. I I do not I do not have um this famous one. What do what do you use for analyzing view. this? Trading I don't view. I don't use Trading View. I feel like the the time I started trading, Trading View was out there. I tried using it. I didn't really settle with it. Right? Okay. I used the MT4 straight or the MT5. Even people would people would say, "No, but these things will be manipulated." Inside of that manipulation, I can find myself Hey folks, ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use Hanko Trade. It was a no-brainer because I was looking for a broker with good trading conditions and one that wouldn't restrict my leverage. Now, by joining Hanko Trade, I've also cut down my trading costs significantly with their super low commission of just $1 per 100K. You can learn more at hankotrade.com or just click the link I've put in the description.
Yeah, cool. Now, what about um, if you could leave, leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Never give up. With trading, it takes time. It's not a let's let's get rich one day, two days, week. It's going to take time. Mostly, it will take a year if you have somebody who's constantly looking out at what you are doing because now they'll be teaching you how to be consistent and how to fish inside of the market. But if you're alone, it might even take longer or it depends on IQ with the person. But never give up because now the process, the process is very difficult of having to find yourself. But once you do, hey, things get to fall very nicely. Cool. Well, look, um, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the listeners to get hold of you? Um, they can, oh God, um, I have an app, it's called, uh, pigmentation FX, one word, it's for Android users, it's on, um, it's on Play Store, for the people who are using your, uh, iOS, your iPhone, you can, uh, catch the web version of it on www.pigmentationfx.com, or you could just, Catch me on Instagram and Twitter. On Instagram is Stacy underscore pigmentation. On Twitter is Stacy under, underscore pigment. I do not use Telegram. Uh, my Facebook, it's not connected to trading. And yeah, that's it. Brilliant. Well, look, a big thank you to Stacy for sharing with us today. Everything we've discussed here, along with all those links, are going to be in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Stacy in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, guys, so there you have it. Interview done and dusted with Stacey. Hope you enjoyed it. It was something a bit different, wasn't it, with the old volatility indexes. Uh, now, for something else different, go and check out the video we shot after the show where she breaks down how she trades head and shoulder patterns, which is something different from what you're probably thinking. So worthwhile checking out. Links underneath the video or on the YouTube channel. Uh, also, remember, whilst you're over there, possibly on Trading Nut, check out episode 152 with Christian, where he is now currently top of the Global World Cup Trading Challenge, doing really well. Now, if you want to copy his trades, then there's an opportunity to do that, to check it out. Go and have a look at that uh, interview show notes page of his over there on tradingnut.com. There should be links around here somewhere. Just find them, click on them, and uh, you'll find out how you can copy those exact same trades that have taken him to the top of that leaderboard with up over 130% return so far. Now, uh, last but not least, remember Robot Builders Club doors are still open. There's an offer on this January 2020. If you want to come on board, no better time than now. Please go and check that out. Robots link at the top of the navigation there on tradingnut.com. Otherwise, we might see you in the Genius Trader when you find out what that is. Stay tuned. Coming soon. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you in the next episode.